If you heard that a military development agency was working on something called Project Mutant, what the heck would you think was going on? We wanted to know too, so we went to the show floor at the Air, Space, and Cyber Conference where the Air Force Research Laboratory had set up shop. We were kind of hoping for genetic experiments, but what they had was almost as intriguing. What if a missile could change its course midair, less like a rigid tube metal and more like, say, a falcon or a hawk? That question was the base of the work behind the emerging tech called Mutant, and we cornered the AFRL to tell us how it works. Check it out. Hello, my name is uh, Dr. Roy Mason. I am an aerospace engineer for the Air Force Research Laboratory. I'm part of the test engineering team. We work on design and system integration. MUTANT stands for Missile Utility Transformation via Articulated Nose Technology. MUTANT allows us to turn the head of the, of the missile. You're able to turn tighter and turn faster. And so the best way to think about it is turning in a sports car versus turning in a bus. You can make better U-turns in a sports car than you can a bus. And so that's what we are able to do with this technology, turn tighter, turn faster, turn better. The typical missile that you see, um, the control surfaces that are typically used in this design are canards, wings, and you have a tail fin. Um, tail fin is very standard, and then you'll have a combination of whether you're gonna have canards or, or wings. The issue with that is that canards and wings are rigid structures that are in the forebody of the missile, um, and it affects the overall aerodynamics of the missile. It does provide benefits, which is why they're used, but there's also some negatives, such as parasitic drag, which is the drag that is induced by the presence of those external bodies. Our proposal is to remove those canards and remove those wings and, ra and rather install an active control surface. So we use the forebody as the active control surface. So by moving the nose of the missile, it replaces that type of maneuverability and the, the performance that you would have from the canards and from the wings. And because it's active, um, you're able, and it's, it's active and conformal. And so when you need to have that maneuverability, you can articulate and get that. And then when you need to be streamlined, when you want to not, when you no longer need to move, and you're just gonna um, fly at a cruising altitude, a straight shot, you can go back to just having a straight, streamlined body. Think about nature. Look at birds, look at beetles, look at butterflies. All those animals that fly do not have rigid wings. Everybody's wings move, everyone's flexible. But when you look at these vehicles and these flight vehicles, they're all rigid. Morphing means that we're creating surfaces that move. If you look at a falcon or a hawk, a bird of prey, when they're flying at their altitude that they're at and they want to look at a, and they want to look at a prey, a rabbit on the ground, they don't just immediately turn their whole body, they just turn their head. And so by, if you look at how a hawk flies, if it, as soon as it turns its head, the body starts to drift towards where its head is looking. And so by looking at how nature flies, we've incorporated those principles and mechanized it in, um, in, in existing vehicles. You know, it started with an idea. Hey, if we turn the head, will the whole body start to move? We tried it. It did. And so based on that, we're like, okay, well with that principle, how can we harness that technology and improve what already exists? And that's what Mutant's all about. We've done one test so far. It's a sled test, which is where you put the missile on a sled and you shoot it down the track with a rocket motor at the back. And what that test showed us was that our articulation mechanism is very strong. It withstands the forces of the Gs that it was pulling almost lifting the sled off of the test track itself. We have started to work towards a second sled test, and that's gonna be coming up pretty soon. That test will prove the other concepts that we have. So it's all about risk reduction, doing the little things, showing the little performance um, gains and boosts so that we can justify having an, a, a, a full-blown a full flight test. And so that's what we're doing right now, just hitting those little check marks. We did, it, we did this first sled test, Let's do the second sled test. And from that, we'll be able to determine how close we are to our other goals. I think it's really cool that we're able to look at nature and be able to see how we can use what we've seen all around us to improve our defense capabilities, improve our technology. And I can tell you for one thing for sure is that we're not gonna stop there. We're, right now, we're articulating the head. The next, tomorrow, we can figure out how we're gonna articulate something else. But I think using nature as our guide, seeing what ultimately has worked for, for thousands of years, 
um, and then being able to make it real life into the technology that we need for us to be an effective country and have that and maintain that air dominance. I think it's pretty cool and I'm glad to be working on something like that. And you know, I can't wait to see where we're gonna go from here.